Hello and welcome to a new installment of the hypertrophy series where we're going to discuss volume and intensity in more details. And in this video, we're going to talk about balancing volume and intensity to promote progressive overload. This is a notion that's very important. Uh, we discussed uh, tonnage a lot. We discussed the value assigned to tonnage and whether or not there is such a thing as junk volume. It's a contentious topic, but there's something that is certain. Whether or not junk volume exists is not really relevant as much as how we get to accumulate large amounts of tonnage. And you get to a point where there is, you're, you, you are the crossroads really, because you can potentially accumulate a lot of tonnage just by doing more sets with the same weight or a lower weight. Meaning what? Instead of doing four sets of close grip bench, right? And pushing progression. You could just slap another set and another set and another set. Meaning what? You do 200 pounds for 10 reps on the close grip and you get to a point where this is very comfortable. You can just add another set and you're going to get nine reps. This is going to boost your overall tonnage by 200 pounds time nine. If you, if you make the if you run the math, you realize that this way of increasing tonnage has a potential to create better results in terms of overall mass of the tonnage than just progressive overload. So why not doing that? Why don't we just do that if, if what we want is tonnage at the end of the day? Well, we don't do that for several reasons. One, because you are going to enter a point where the, your ability to recover from the muscular damage that is being inflicted by the weight is going to be so great that you're going to go back to baseline with every single set eventually, meaning that the 200 pounds that you're going to close grip uh, bench are not going to be challenging enough to really induce any interesting amounts of muscular fatigue, meaning that you're going to get to a point where you can do 10, uh, 10 reps on the set for as many sets as you want. And you understand at that point that the first set you're going to do with the 10 reps is going to be strikingly inefficient because you're able to repeat those 10 reps for as, as much as 10 sets sometimes, which is why 10 sets of 10 is not a good rep set scheme is because there is too many of these reps that are done in an intensity window that is not interesting. Now, we also know that intensity is not as simple as just a number because it ramps up as the set goes on, meaning that the last rep of the set is going to be higher in intensity than the first rep. But we still want to be able to compound all of these reps and get to an interesting intensity window, which is not going to be the case if you decide that your way of approaching progressive overload is going to be to increase the sets. So this is one reason why we don't want to do that. Another reason is that lifting by increasing the weight, so, mean, so putting weight on the bar as a mean of applying progressive overload is going to be a very easy way to track progression. If you slap more and more sets, you might, you might make progress, that's a, that's a valid point, but A, it's going to be super time consuming, and two, if you want to branch out from that method of, pro of progressive overload, where do you go from there? If you are limiting yourself to just adding more sets because you just want to push a uh, light weight, you just cut uh, yourself a path that could have been beneficial for hypertrophy. If you base the majority of your progression on putting weight on the bar. This is going to leave a lot of room open to trying more unorthodox methods to improve your strength down the line, meaning that you will also have the ability to slap on more sets and reps if you want to, if you feel like putting weight on the bar is not the solution right now. And also, it, it promotes progression. Why does it promote progression? We're not talking about just strength progress here. We're talking about muscular development that's going to be directly correlated with the tonnage increase. Yes, the first method that I described is going to be a very fast 
payoff, meaning that the tonnage is going to increase immediately. But you also understand that whether or not we, we believe that the tonnage that is accrued with that method is quality, it's not going to be a method which in the long run is going to get you the best results. Why? Because your ability to work out is also going to be strictly correlated with the time you can put into the workout. For example, you snatch grip deadlift and you get to eight reps and then you increase the weight. If you decide that you don't want to increase the weight, that's fine. You can keep doing more and more reps if you want, because at the end of the day, it, resu it will result in similar amounts of tonnage. But you're going to be limited by cardiovascular endurance eventually, and your muscular endurance is not going to be spent. So what do you do? And this is what most people do when they do this approach. They do more sets so that they can reset in between, let their cardiovascular system catch up, and then get into the lift again and get the muscle tired like this in cycles. But it's not as effective as just bumping up the weight, because in the long run, between someone who stayed at 300 pounds on the snatch rate deadlift and just did more and more reps, and someone who slowly increased the weight five pounds every time they got their rep uh, goal, this guy here and this guy here are both going to evolve in tonnage, but at the end of the day, that guy is going to have a higher amount of tonnage when push comes to shove. Why? Because they're going to have the ability to cram more tonnage in a smaller window of time. And you're going to find that out as you get more advanced. But the more you progress, the more tonnage you need. But the, 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 the amount of time that you have available to lift is not going to magically improve. You're not going to magically get five hours a day to work out. So you need to be able to do as much as possible in as small a window of time as possible, which is where this method fell, because this method here is going to accumulate 300 pounds, 300 pounds, 300 pounds, or this guy might have gotten to 450. So he's going to basically get uh, more tonnage in, almost as much tonnage in two reps as you get in three reps here, and this compounds over time, and this is going to make it much easier to accrue tonnage, whether it is, whether we decide if tonnage is actually impacted by the intensity window, which is a different topic for a different video, I think it is, but it's not relevant because I just proved to you that in terms of balancing volume and intensity, prog uh, promoting productive overload is the way to go. You lift at a higher intensity window to promote progression and put more weight on the bar. And also keep in mind, and we're going to end the hypertrophy series video on that, promoting progressive overload is going to improve volume and intensity. Both values are going to go up. And the opposite is also true. Uh, by balancing the volume and intensity, the progressive overload ability goes up. Those two notions, no, notions feed into each other. But if you refuse to apply the principles of progressive overload through weight on the bar, you are limiting your ability to balance volume and intensity. And the more of an ability you have to manipulate volume and intensity to your own likings, the easier it is to accumulate tonnage in A, the amount of time that is beneficial for you, and B, within the realms of variables that are going to be uh, promoting health, so you're not going to suffer injuries, and also to be motivating mentally because lifting heavy weights for a lot of people is going to be motivated. So that's it for this video. Again, if you have questions because you have certain parts of the video you didn't understand, please ask in the comments. Volume and intensity can be talked about forever, and I have a lot of videos on the topics that are going to uh, ex expand on because a lot of people have very uh, pointu questions about them, and I like to answer them. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.